In this SY2 screencast, we're going to continue looking at recent developments in the sociology of the mass media by focusing on a perspective called postmodernism. And this is the very last topic that you need to learn for the mass media section at the SY2 exam. Now, as we've already discussed in our SY1 screencasts, postmodernists argue that contemporary society is increasingly characterised by greater diversity, choice and individual freedom. And postmodernists believe that these types of values are also reflected uh, more and more in the output of the mass media. So postmodernists argue that media output is quite fragmented and diverse and it offers consumers uh, an abundance of choice for different tastes and the globalisation of the media that we discussed in the previous screencast uh, gives individuals more opportunities to form their identities uh, unconstrained by the limited horizons of local cultures. And according to the postmodernist perspective, many of us actually define our identities uh, in terms of media imagery. So the media offer uh, a wide range of identities and lifestyles from which we can pick and choose uh, and act out. And every day the average person uh, sees about 400 to 500 uh, advertisements and these adverts mainly focus on telling people who to be and how to be it. So according to postmodernists, people are increasingly constructing their own identities from images and lifestyles that are promoted by the mass media. And the media theorist Dominic Strinati argues that we now live in a world surrounded by media screens and images. And sociologists use this term, media saturation, to describe the way in which we're constantly being bombarded by messages and images from the mass media. In other words, media saturation describes the way in which uh, many of us increasingly spend large parts of our lives looking at screens. And there's plenty of evidence to support this idea of media saturation if we examine uh, the way in which media consumption levels have grown rapidly in recent years. And this term, media consumption, simply refers to the amount of time that people spend uh, with mass media products. So, for example, if we think about television, uh, the number of TV sets in developed countries uh, and the amount of time that people spend uh, viewing TV has increased dramatically from the 1950s onwards. And if current trends in TV watching continue, the average child born today will have spent more time watching television by the age of 18 than in any other pursuit except sleep. And individuals aged four and over in the UK watch an average of about 26 hours of television a week. And those in the lower social classes watch more TV than those from the top three social classes. And around about 80% of children now have their own TV in the bedroom. Media consumption online has also increased exponentially in recent years. So in 2010, the UK's Office for National Statistics estimated that 60% of UK adults access the internet uh, every single day and this was double uh, the figure for 2006. And there's been a radical take up of the new smartphones uh, and tablet computers that have been made possible by uh, the spread of wireless uh, technology. And in 2011 uh, a survey by the media regulator Ofcom found that 60% of uh, teenagers were highly addicted to their smartphones with a high proportion of users uh, leaving them switched on for 24 hours a day. However, it's important to note 
that internet access and use is marked by inequalities. And nationally, uh, around about uh, 8.7 million people, or 17.5% of the population, have never used the internet. And uh, of these 8.7 million people, 5.5 million were women, 3.6 million were men, uh, two-thirds were aged 65 or over, and almost half were disabled. So there's therefore uh, clearly uh, what we might call a digital divide. Postmodernists argue that the proliferation of electronic media within society uh, engulfs us with a multitude of meanings, messages and images. And although this can be quite liberating, uh, exposure to multiple realities can also um, have the effect of making life uh, seem rootless, fragmented, uh, empty and even meaningless. The most important postmodernist perspective on the media comes from the work of the French social theorist uh, Baudrillard. And Baudrillard argues that we now live uh, in a media saturated society in which media images uh, dominate and distort the world. So he argues increasing exposure to the media begins to blur the division between our everyday reality and the world of media images. And he argues that meaning has become uh, effectively destabilised by the constant bombardment of media images. And this means that we're no longer sure what is real and what is not real. The fictional uh, and real become interwoven with each other. And these ideas, uh, Baudrillard's ideas, became the basis of the Matrix films that you might, might have seen. For example, Baudrillard argues that media images replace reality to such an extent that they've symbolically annihilated the reality of war. So the TV news uh, presents a sanitised version of war, with war as media-constructed spectacles for the viewer to gaze at, which have such an air of unreality about them that it's hard to distinguish between uh, image and reality, as they appear like Hollywood movies or computer games. And Baudrillard calls this distorted view of the world hyperreality. In this condition of hyperreality, appearances are everything, with the media presenting what Baudrillard calls simulacra. So simulacra is a term uh, that refers to artificial, uh, make-believe images uh, of real events, which often bear little or no relationship to the real world, um, such as this uh, advertisement that you might recognise. Now this process of creating uh, images which bear little or no relationship to the real world has four main stages according to Baudrillard. And we can illustrate those four stages uh, with reference to uh, the Dove Evolution advertisement, which I'm sure most of you have seen. So in the first stage, we've got an image that is a faithful reproduction of reality. In the second stage, we begin to get a perversion of reality. So we begin to get the development of an image uh, that masks uh, a profound reality that disguises it to some extent. And that's taken further with the third phase, uh, which Baudrillard calls pretense. So this is the stage where the image is really beginning to uh, mask uh, the absence of a profound reality. And then in the fourth stage, uh, we reach the situation where we end up with an image that has no relation to any reality whatsoever. So this particular image, uh, if you hadn't have seen the advertisement, uh, you probably wouldn't be able to work out that this image is based on this real person. So to use the jargon, this particular image that we end up with uh, is a pure uh, simulacrum. Now we usually think of the media as being in between us and reality, 
hence the word media and the idea of mediation. But postmodernists claim that in a media-saturated world where we're constantly immersed in media, where we're looking at screens, on the move, at work, uh, the distinction between reality and the media representation of it becomes either blurred or even entirely invisible to us. In other words, we no longer have any clear sense of the difference between real things and images of them, or real experiences and simulations of them. And this means that the media can no longer uh, hold up the mirror to reality, since reality is saturated by advertising, film, video games, television and other media images. So whereas the media used to claim to be a window of the world, the postmodernist argument is today it reflects on itself. For example, Garod suggests that reality TV shows, uh, along with social networking and video sharing sites, have blurred the distinction between reality and hyperreality, leaving audiences confused about what is real and what is media created. And in this condition of hyperreality, Bourgeois suggests that we identify more with media images than we do with our own daily experiences. So we increasingly live uh, media-led virtual lives rather than real ones. So we're now more likely, in his view, to get excited uh, about who is the best act um, on a reality TV show uh, or engage with people that we hardly know on Facebook and Twitter uh, rather than get involved uh, in the communities that we actually live in. And Bourgeois also suggests that the media can now create such perfect and idealistic representations of reality that media images uh, often outperform actual reality. They seem to be uh, even better than the real thing. And the impact is that the audience is often left feeling depressed uh, as their own life uh, doesn't live up to this artificial reality. A final argument made by postmodernists uh, about the role of the mass media concerns the distinction between popular culture, which is sometimes also referred to as mass culture or low culture or low art, and high culture, which is sometimes referred to as high art. So as we can see here, popular culture refers to cultural products that are produced as uh, commercial entertainment uh, for sale to the mass of ordinary people. So this involves mass-produced, standardised, short-lived products uh, that are seen often as having no lasting value uh, and which often uh, demand very little in the way of critical thought or discussion. Whereas in contrast, high culture or high art refers to specialist cultural products which are seen as having uh, lasting artistic uh, or literary value. However, postmodernists argue that elements of high culture have now become a part of popular culture and elements of popular culture have also been incorporated into high culture. Uh, and this has happened to such an extent that many postmodernists argue that it's therefore no longer uh, helpful to make a distinction between the two. So mass marketing uh, in particular through the mass media has helped to break down this distinction between high culture on the one hand and popular or mass culture on the other. For example, Van Gogh's famous uh, Sunflowers painting is obviously an example of a high culture uh, art form, but it's also now available as a mass produced form of popular culture as we can see in this particular image, that it's mass produced as a canvas reproduction, it's been mass produced as a set of playing cards, greeting cards, a notebook, a bookmark, a puzzle cube, jigsaw puzzles, a lunchbox, a plate and a vase. 